cannot keep up with what the blogs are doing. Right now, you know, Danny Brown, perfect example. Magazines have not caught up to Danny Brown. All of us up here, we're on to Danny Brown. Magazines can't keep up with what Dallas is doing. They can't keep up with what Frank is doing. Magazines haven't even caught up with what Odyssey's doing. And Odyssey's been doing this for what, five, six years straight, making nothing but heat. Until the magazines and until the corporations start reflecting what's really going on, we're gonna be winning. That's essentially it. I guess uh, what, what one of the points that he, he was making was that documentation is starting to take a, a, a take on a short form. Um, you know, for posting all those things, we're posting things that we, unless we were from an area that had it largely, we had to dig for those things. And so that element is being taken away from, or may, may not be being done justice to, by the, the, the kids that are youth that are coming up, um, not having to dig for these things. So they kind of get it short form. 140 characters on Twitter, you know, you're not really getting the backstory. If you don't put it up on a permalink, those are things that are going to go away. Um, so, we, how do you work towards? Because the, the source was physical when it was dope and it was it was good. Like, okay. But you you had it. If you bought two, you were, you were archiving. Yeah. Also, another thing is that when I started writing poisonous paragraphs, I came up from the generation of we had Stress Magazine, you know, right. we had On the Go, we had Ego Trip, and I said. What's missing from the blogosphere right now? That. We need to take back that whole journalism aspect before uh, artists start feeling comfortable enough to before, before artists start feeling comfortable enough to run up on a, a, a blogger or a, a, what was what became the blogger, the uh, hip hop journalist, start running up on them and like, yo man, I don't like what you wrote. The thing is with the blogs, we didn't have that problem. We wrote whatever the hell we felt. And also another thing was that, all right, we said, I grew up on this, I grew up on this, I'm used to seeing this, I'm used to seeing real hip hop journalism. So when I started writing Poison's Paragraphs, I said, that's what I'm gonna start going back to. I'm gonna write that, I'm gonna write that. So I was documenting stuff, I was seeing a whole bunch of other blogs. I was seeing what, uh, what Brandon Soderbergh was doing, I was seeing what, uh, what my boy Eric Coons was doing at uh, When They Reminisce. I was seeing what Travis Glaive was doing with uh, his blog, uh, WTR. And that's the chamber I felt, you know? I started seeing what Dallas was doing, so I started throwing in things that Dallas was doing, because Dallas was just straight right stories about, you know, growing up where he grew up, you know? And that's where the whole documentarians, where the whole, where the whole documentary thing came in. So the blogosphere was never, you know, lacking that documentary feel, or the hip hop journalism feel. It's just that you had to dig for it. But like Dallas said earlier, people didn't want to read. But I said, I'm going to give you what you need, opposed to what you want. Um, before I get into it, I'm going to apologize because I may end up cussing. So I apologize ahead of time. I know everybody's been trying to keep it PC and everything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, all personal feelings aside in regards to Elliot Wilson, I don't think old boy has like the foggiest idea of what it means to be what we do. He claims to be, we're documenting the culture, but I feel that everybody here in one, in any way, shape or form is document is doing some kind of documentation also. The, the thing is like blogs, were basically virtual diaries. Like we could put our thoughts and thus our opinions on virtual wax. So if we're, we, we may not be documenting a high profile rapper getting sent to prison because we do not give a sh about a high profile rapper going to prison. People go to prison all the time. <laughs> Why, why are we worried about this one dude going to prison when we would much rather support and promote other artists that A, aren't in prison, B, don't have a prison record, C, work a nine to five like everybody else, and D, 
put out pretty damn good music. So if that's not documentation to, if, if that's not documenting the culture in all aspects, I don't know what is, to be honest with you. And, and prison is filled with, with uh, millions of low profile rappers. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta say that, that uh, Dart is correct that the Telecommunications Act did, did cause um, uh, terrestrial radio to consolidate. I also blame um, I also blame the decline of hip hop on Versace. And um, if people would have just stayed wearing polo, <laughs> uh, hip hop may not have died. Hip hop may not have died. We, we'd all have yachts now. The polo polos. Um. I want to give the youth a, a peer uh, learning uh, period uh, where anyone who runs a blog, has a blog, has experience with blogging. Uh, can have this opportunity to come up to a mic um, and talk about their experience or ask questions of the panel. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Not all at once. If you rap, please don't come up and start rapping to me. Like, I'm cool on that. Yeah. My name is lost my voice. My name is Lance Coleman. Um, I run In The Loop HU with blog, a hip hop artist. Are there any artists that you just will not post on your site? And that's directed towards anybody up there who has a website? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, and which ones? Do you want names? Yes, yes, names. That's not, that's not nice. Yeah. Like, I feel like yeah, yeah, the yes is the answer. There are people that I won't post, but in the sense that, that Mega said earlier, there are people that don't need my help. Like, they already have labels with marketing departments and budgets to hang up stickers and posters all over town. Like, the artists that I try to talk about don't have that at all. All they have is the music they make. You know, a lot of my friends, you know, that make music, you know, are around my age or, you know, seven or ten years older. You know, they old dudes that still make music, and they don't know anything about the internet. And that's where I come in. You know, so there definitely are artists that I won't post. You know, because A, I don't know them. B, I don't really care about their music or their narrative. And three, it doesn't do anything for me but give me, you know, a bigger bandwidth bill at the end of the month. So like, on that sense, you know, since I'm paying for all this out of pocket, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta be mindful of what it's gonna cost me at the end of the month. You know, sometimes I gotta pace myself. You know, I get good music sent to me all the time. Nowadays, thanks to Twitter, I just retweet it and that's my support. You know, I can't put everything up on the site without it, you know, without it killing me, you know, and, and sometimes, like, you know, like, whether it's, you know, the message that the person's putting out or, or whatever, you know, there's, there's plenty of reasons not to post somebody, but I try not to use my site for negativity very often. I can probably count, I can probably count on my finger, on my finger, maybe, maybe three fingers, three times that, you know, I've used my site to, like, disrespect somebody. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm putting that energy out there, you know, what's going to make you want to come to, come to my site and listen to somebody I'm trying to put you on? On to you know if I'm if I'm wasting my time hating on you know walk a flock of fame or something like that. For one, you don't care. He getting money anyway, so that's me wasting my breath. And two, I put up something that you may think is you know not great quality and not a club banger or you know your girlfriend don't like it. Then you know you waste your time you know hating on what I'm trying to put you on to. So I figure if you keep it positive and just post the stuff that you do like, show support the stuff you do like, and don't waste your time hating on what you don't. You know, at least publicly, you can do that with your boys. I hate all the time behind closed doors. But in public, I, there's no need to waste my time. You know, this is somebody I don't really care for. I just talk about the stuff I do like. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I haven't checked my inbox in about like 14 hours. So I'm pretty sure a good 85% of what I get in my inbox whenever I decide to check it. I won't post and we'll end up going to the trash. So, um, anybody I don't post, I mean, I, like, like he said, I can't really put a particular name out there because like, if I don't like it, my partner may like it. If Shake doesn't like it, somebody out in the world will like it. So, in a sense, so what if I'm posting like the old oh, let's do it remix, which to me is like the greatest song in all of Nignorance. Like, I love that song. 
Like that's like, like the, the everything from the fur coat to the diddy pop that that caters to my side that we'd rather not talk about. You know what I'm saying? But will I ever put that in my iPod? No. Will I ever play that while I'm cleaning my crib? Probably. But will I ever <laughs> will I ever tell somebody to download it? Sure. Why not? Somebody else might like it out there. So. It's, it's just, you can't really, unless it's like awful, like random acts of awful, then I couldn't like not say, I can't say who I don't like or refuse to post or whatnot, yeah. As a reviewer, you know, and I, you know, I don't run the blog, but I, I review for it, uh, there's nothing that I won't, you know, there's nothing that I won't post. You know, I, I give it a listen and, and I'll do my best to write uh, critically, and I think that's where, uh, for me, uh, it's very important for me to just be critical uh, and not be um, like like some of the posts I you know I post something, I review something, and I give it a bad rating, uh, and fanboys will like bash me on OK Player, like oh, and I'm like yo, you're a fan, and I'm a reviewer. My job is to be critical, right? Not not to necessarily say like, you know, not to be like oh, this is awesome, but to be like yo, this is why this is good, this is why this is not so great for me. You know, but most of the time, I you know, like Gucci Man comes across, you know, comes to my house or comes to my email, you know. And for me, it's like, yo, for me, not not necessarily my my shtick, you know what I mean. But if you, but regionally, this may be a great thing for somebody else who's who, who's living in, in, in Gucci Man's neighborhood, right? And I say that, like, look, if if you like this, this, and this, then this is the record for you. Here's what I think the potholes are for me. But if you dig it, you know. Take a chance. I'm gonna give it a 60, but you might give it a 90. Give it a shot if that's your style. You gotta be careful too, because there's an entire you know segment of the internet that's devoted to putting up crap just because it's funny. So you know, and I'm just saying that because like you might think that it's the greatest thing in the world, but you know, once it's out there, everybody piles on. You never know what's gonna happen, and you know, you might be famous, but for maybe not for the reasons that you wanted to be. <laughs> I have a, a question from a, a blogger uh, that sent me a text message. I uh, wanted to know about the uh, New Music Coalition and uh, the, uh, the uh, issue with redundancy and a lot of the same blogs sharing the same content. Future Music Coalition? Was that the, the, the New Music Cartel? <laughs> No, I, I wanted to hand that. What was the question again? Sorry. Was uh, how do you deal with redundancy um, at the New Music Cartel and other blogs sharing uh, content? One, and I guess uh, good practices if you're going to take something that you saw on somebody else's blog, uh, do you owe that person a credit? Is it courteous to give that person a credit? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know something? Can I ask you? Did that, did that come from LA Books? I would, not, I would not be surprised. Not, 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 can you say the name of who sent that text? Good, good friend, good friend. You want to know that the greatest thing, the best or worst, depending on your perspective, I was at a round table for the source about a week or two ago, asked me the same damn question about, about the whole link back. Like one dude who was there likened not crediting anybody to plagiarism and to me in terms of redundancy let's be real every damn near every music website is going to have the same something so in regards to us we may have the same tracks strewn across our site but a we also know that we also provide different artists, like some, some of the things you'll see on a Not Right or You Heard That New, you won't see on a Two Dope Boys or a On Smash. And, hmm. And like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I hate when people ask me that question. Like, real talk, because in terms of like the whole not crediting back or anything like that, do you know how often that happens to everybody? Like, to me, it happens, it's, it happens so much to the point where my words are even swapped. My words are taken, like the exact content that I write. And I know how I write. I write like I know I'm gonna get punched in the face sometimes because of the things I say. And if I see the exact same thing in a different spot, 
do I get mad at it? Not really. Do 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 I start crying foul or anything? Or like, you ain't linking me back, what up, cuz, or any other? No, I don't do that. You just keep it pushing. I mean, like, who, like, who cares? Like, seriously, why do you care? You don't get a link back. Okay, try harder. You know, what's so hard about that? I'm, no, I'm being, I'm being dead serious. Like, I can't stand when people get butt hurt because a song that, A, they didn't create, they never created the song. Like if, like if it was MC Met Dot, I created the song and nobody linked it back to me, then I'd be pissed off. But if I have a J Electronica song that I found somewhere else, why the hell would you get mad at me for, for not crediting you when you got it from somebody else? Unless you got it directly from J Elect Hands or something, don't look at me when it comes to like linking me back. Go that way. Like, I'm, <laughs> I think Donna said something bad. I, I, I think the, the, the real truth is that uh, on the internet, the time, there's no, there's, there's no longer time. That, that has fallen away. So the idea that, oh, wait a minute, this song you know, was on uh, Two Dope Boys first, you know, it, it doesn't really matter anymore. It was on Rap Radar first, it doesn't matter anymore. It's not when you found it, it's that you found it. It's that, it's that, you, it's that it came to you. And I think that's petty. That, that's, uh, that's something that, that's petty that's going on with, um, with, with blog uh, writers and content creators, and they gotta, they gotta stop it. Um, again, from the artist's perspective, I, I think a lot of smaller blogs are preoccupied with linkbacks because they want the success of the larger blogs. They think that if they get that credibility on larger sites, that that'll translate into more people going back to their sites, which is not, <coughs> not, not the case. Like, Find, find another way. It's, it's content that he said that no one truly owns. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You, you actually touched on something when you said if the artists put it up themselves. That's something that I would battle with. Um, I'll put something up from Bandcamp, and Bandcamp provides embedded players so that these guys are technically supposed to take that link and put it on their site, and then all of the numbers actually go to me. But what that does is it cancels out their numbers. So a lot of times, they'll take what I put, download it, and re-upload it with their own links and put it up there. And again, sitting with that dilemma of like, do I have a problem with that? Does that bother me? It doesn't. It can't. It can't bother you because again, it's people getting your music, and that's at the end of the line. That's what you want. You just want people to get your music. To, to, to be honest with you, you said how it kind of cancels out our numbers. It doesn't really. It really doesn't. If anything, like, um, there are certain occasions where... So why, like, why, did, why do they do it? What, not links back? Like no, no, no. Or, like if an artist puts a link up mm -hmm. for uh, an embedded player. So if an artist puts an embedded player up and asks you to put that on your site, Say for example, you don't put that on your site and you'll re-upload that to MediaShare. What's the reason behind it? A variety of reasons. Um, sometimes a lot of embeds don't work and we'll have to go through the arduous task of, yo, can you send me a working embed code or whatnot. So for me, if you guys send me, if you send me an embed code and it doesn't work, hopefully there's like a link to, to it and then I just go, I found it here. Or whatnot. But for the embeds are like embeddable codes are just really, really tricky. Like sometimes they don't. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. Like more often than not, they don't. So that's why, for the most part, they'll end up going up into a media fire or a Z share or a user share instead. Um, to piggyback off what Odyssey said. Pause. Um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of a lot of smaller blogs, you know, when they when they cry about not getting the link back, it's usually because you know they they want to get their numbers up. They want people to come to them for for certain content. Now, when you're dealing with you know blogs as big as all the ones in the new music cartel, they grind it for a long time to get to the point where they're at. So, if you're an artist and your music is getting out there, you got to just be happy that your music is getting heard. If you're a smaller blog. You know, you just gotta be, you know, be happy that you're also documenting, you know, the artists that you like. You know, the the way to get noticed is to, is to be where everybody isn't. You know, so like if if 
you know, sites are posting one sort of content, you know, that you feel that, that, that you know, is just all over the place, you post something different and people come to you for that. You know, if that's, if that's what you're in the blog game for is to be noticed. If you're there just to post content that you like and you want other people to like with you, you know, music is born when you're the only person that likes some shit. You know, so, you know, that's why, you know, when certain artists say, you know, I've known for a while, that I've been happy about knowing, and then finally everybody else in the world, it clicks with them too, and they like that artist. That's the most fun part of, of, of music to me, is being able to enjoy it with other people, to understand it the way that you do, and, and you know, and also want to share and, and get in that workload out. So, um, yeah, you know, you, I, I used to, I remember you used to get tight about, you know, like people downloading songs that I know I got from specifically from an artist I put up, they retag it and then upload it on theirs like they had it, you know, like, but at the end of the day, that's, that's you know, something a 14 year old worries about, not a 29 year old man, you know, so you can't be mad about that type of stuff. It's, it's, it's the nature of technology, it's the nature of the, the, nature of the internet, sharing, sharing information, right. and that, that should be the end goal, I think. Right. But to add on, you know, like we say that, you know, if you're doing this, you're taking on uh, the, the traditional role of, of a journalist, you're curating, you're editing, you know, if someone's jacking your whole your whole post, they they've taken your work. You know, that's not and, plagiarism, and, though. I'm no, sorry. No, I'm not saying it's plagiarism, but part of the human ego is going to say, "Yo, I did that. That's not yours." But like, I guess you know, like Dallas said earlier, you know, if they're stealing from you, you're on the right track. You know, if if you've if you've put something out there, the one of the bigger guys jerked you for and and uh, you feel jerked you for and you didn't get credit, you know, you're doing something good because they were checking for you. Like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really, because it's the, the, coming from the journalist field, that line, that journal, those rules of journalism are kind of hazy and blurry in regards to blogging or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been, I and Shake have been hit up so many times, either via email or on our site, basically like, why do you guys talk a certain way about a certain thing? And the last time I checked, the website was a showcase of our opinions. So if we're not allowed to give our own opinions, what are we? A magazine without an editorial thing. You know that, like, if we ran if we ran a site like a magazine, then those rules of journalism would apply. But if, but it's basically like a musical diary of sorts. Like we're giving our own opinions. We're giving like a little hodgepodge of information in regards to the artist, and we're giving our own opinions of that song. So we can't be. I don't think anybody should be considered like. I don't think. Well, it's. Like, it's just hard to say, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, it, but you know what I'm saying though, yeah. Let's go down. Question comment? Um, also wanted to just make a comment about the, uh, the comment of plagiarism too. With the internet, it's real like just everything is considered plagiarism. Um, I've been running like lyric sites and stuff and you would think like putting up the lyrics to somebody's song would be helpful to the artist, but they definitely try to cease and desist just even any type of content that you don't have permission for. Um, but my question um, was more so concerned around like um, the the booming of your sites actually around like I guess it's for each blogger. Um, the like when you get your first traffic boom. Like I know most of you guys like you mentioned you were doing stuff with Hip Hop DX. So I'm assuming you guys you were able to kind of piggyback off of that. Um, you mentioned that you've been just doing stuff since like 92 on the internet, like where did you start? Do you guys, I mean like you guys have like a standard like WordPress template, so I know it's like with like optimizing your site, do you do extra like on the technical back end? Like how do you actually grow your traffic? Does social media help? Does, you know, where does your traffic come from? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I used to get an inordinate amount of traffic uh, based around uh, hoops, your hoops from Flavor of Love. I had done a few posts uh, with her, right. images that I had found, uh, you know, different photo shoots she had done, and I was getting ridiculous traffic. I stopped posting pictures of hoops, and I even closed the comment sections for, for those posts because I didn't want that traffic. Why not? Uh, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't like the, the traffic of 13-, of 14-year-olds 
And that, that wasn't how I wanted to build my community. Actually, I want my community to be the kind of place where, um, Mech and I were talking earlier before we, we came to the panel, where women actually feel comfortable leaving comments. They actually feel safe in this comment community. And so uh, the, the images of hoops um, were causing the, the traffic to, to be very uh, adolescent and, and just not, um, it, it, it didn't blend well to the other issues that I discuss on the site, which deal with uh, politics to uh, all, all kinds of issues that I want people to really feel comfortable about coming, uh, coming to the site and talking about. Um, in, in regards to growing our traffic, I'll be dead honest with you. I have no idea how, I, don't, I have no idea how it happened. I don't know, I have no idea why it's still happening. I have no idea why it's still growing. Like, it's, I couldn't even explain it to you to be honest with you. I mean, the, I, the best way I can say is that it started word of mouth and now, I think, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I just think it's just simply word of mouth. How long has it been up? Yo. Mecca, sorry. Me and Mecca, me and Mecca used to, <laughs> me and Mecca used to both comment on XXL, all right? This is back around 2005. Oh, 05, oh, 06, yeah. Yeah, so me and Mecca, him, Danger, also another dude from um, allhiphop.com, we all started there, and we would comment on different things. Now, based on our commenting styles, based on the things we talked about, people kept coming and they kept reading our comments. <laughs> Then, eventually, people were like, yo, this dude Mecca, man, Mecca Soul be saying some stuff. So what happened was once, Ta Tara Henley was like, yo, this dude needs a blog. Mecca got a blog on Hip Hop DX. We all know, Slap Boxing with Jesus. Yeah. I read the hell out of that blog. <laughs> thank you, thank you. A lot of people in this room, if you remember that blog, we read the hell out of that blog. Anything you did after that, you had created what people would call your brand. Because we, your words, you know what I'm saying? We know when Mecca writes something, Mecca wrote that. We know when Dallas writes something, that's something Dallas wrote. We know what Frank wrote, you know what I'm saying? We invest ourselves in these, in these, in these men, we invest ourselves in their words. And that's how Mecca got two dope boys popping, because people followed them. He isn't even aware of it. So you gotta be true to yourself if you're gonna write, you gotta be true to yourself if you make music. And that's just like Odyssey has been saying all day. Odyssey said, I didn't even know what the hell blogs were. I just did me. I put my music up. People responded to it. Real recognizes real. Don't forget that shit. Yeah, yeah what he said. Um, there, people talk all the time about they try to gain, you know, get hits or whatever. If you're in that, if you're in that business, you know, you're probably not doing it because you love it. You're just, I don't know why you want to collect hits or something and feel good about looking at numbers every morning. Um, but I mean, you can you can do stuff on the back end of your site. But the the smartest thing you can do is publish often. You know, some people like you know, so, some people like start a blog and think it's a good idea. They just you know, if maybe it's not the right thing for them. Like I. On my site, I got lucky because I spun it off a newspaper that I worked for, so I brought some community with it. It was a community I'd already built, and they kind of stuck around, but then it kept growing and growing. It grew because I kept writing, well, you know, God knows if it's relevant, but like, you know, I tried to write every single day, and I tried to write it because I gave a shit deeply about what I was writing about, and then, you know, just making myself do that, you know, maybe I want to just like lay around in my underwear and play video games, but I'm going to write this post. You know, so, and then I brought other people into it and they do it for free, but you know, the fact that it populates all the time means that Google finds it a lot better. The fact that, you know, you're writing with a lot of personality that, you know, you're, you're doing it because, you, you know, to not do it would just drive you crazy, you know. That's right, yeah. that's what people want too, you know, and that's what drives the hits, the, the, the Google ranks, and that's what uh, keeps people coming back to the, the yeah. site. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that Dart mentioned my slap boxing days because um, the way that whole thing came about was I started doing, I started writing for Hip Hop DX and I was a music editor of a local Los Angeles based magazine in 04. But the politics that were involved, like I would write an article that I felt was dope for DX and they would just chop it up. And me, I'm very like hard headed and stubborn. So if I see something that's chopped up, it's like, don't post it, I don't want that. And then at the, the, the magazine, the magazine dude would always tell me that I always had to write a good review, 
even if it was a, a bad album, because the album's label was paying the ad dollars, which translated into the money in my pocket. So after about six months of doing all this and, and living in my mom's basement, I was like, I can't do this. I quit. And I, I had like a massive writer's block for about two years. I didn't write anything. So in, in between that time, I ended up getting a job in like the entertainment production company working on like music videos, blah, 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 whoop de whoop de wham And to pass the time away, I started visiting. I stumbled across like Nah, right. I stumbled across Dallas Penn. I start, stumbled across a variety of websites. And at first I thought it was the geekiest thing in the world. Like, why are these people leaving comments? On, this is so stupid. And then after a while, I got compelled to start writing my own comments. And like he said, I got mentioned by a few, couple people at Double XL, which led me to meet them, which led me, I almost had a chance to be a blogger for Double XL in 07, but um, it fell through. And then a week later, I ended up being um, a blogger for DX. So it's just, um, damn, I don't even know what my point is. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just, you know, I'm always amazed, and I'm still amazed. I'm like, I'm humbled as, I'm humbled as all madness, but I'm just amazed at the fact that people respect, if not respect, appreciate us enough to keep wanting to come back and they appreciate our, they may not, they may not necessarily like me, but they in some way, shape or form appreciate my opinion. And then obviously they're telling their peoples and then everybody's just coming back. So it's like, it's just, it's just an amazing adult feeling to just see that happen. How it happens, I had no idea, but I'm like a really appreciative of it. So uh, I just want to do a quick time check. It's six o'clock. This, this event is going for another half hour. There's about eight people in line behind me. Um, I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to ask their questions. So maybe when they ask, everyone doesn't answer it. We want to leave time at the end for people to come up and talk to the panelists one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I'm just going to give a, a quick question. And, and the question is really, what role do local blogs, local music blogs, local entertainment blogs, or what role should they play in helping to build the career or the following of an artist? Um, well, in my case, as I said earlier, the reason I started Rap As I Know was because, um, you know, the community of artists I, I worked and, and talked about rap music with and, and, and went to shows with, um, we felt underrepresented, you know. I mean, the music industry is in New York. I had eventually had to leave Texas to come to New York if I felt like I was going to be a part of this on any sort of, you know, major scale. It's like, if you want to go into New York or L.A., you're kind of caught in the middle, you know. So, you know, it's like... New York is, you know, Mordor and the Eye of Sauron is like looking across the land for a new region to exploit for a few years. You know, Houston had a couple years ago. Uh, you know, Atlanta's doing things and they go to the Midwest for a little bit, you know, and, and, and it just keeps shifting around like that. So, you know, when you're in an underrepresented area, you got to rep for your, yourself, you know. Um, perfect example is, is Detroit. Um, you know, even though behind the scenes they may not all get along, they look like one united, you know, army of just badass rappers that'll just out rap anybody on the face of the planet. Everybody in Detroit can rap except for Bazaar. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like they just fake lane, just <laughs> fly, playing Red Rover. And you know, as a, as a, as a, as a smaller uh, a smaller market that's not New York or L.A. or, or you know any of the big cities. You, you got to band together, you know, whether you guys, you know, you know, get along or not. Um, you know, like, you, it's, it's, just, it's just power in numbers. One ant isn't going to carry a log, a whole bunch of them are. You know, so at the end of the day, you guys got to get noticed as a scene. You got to have support within your own community. Like, one of the things I, I always found annoying about, you know, being down south is, um, you know, the regional favoritism. You know, like, somebody coming from New York and doing a show, oh, we all going here. But then a local cat put on a show, nobody want to show up because, you know, he ain't on BET, he ain't on this, that, and the other. You got to support your own first, um, and then other people start to notice you. Like, I've been knowing, I've been knowing, that's grammatically <coughs> correct. Um, I've known Odyssey and, you know, a lot of the, the artists in his, his collective for, you know, for years. And now it's just like, it's seeming like the rest of the world is starting to catch up. Like, people are familiar you know, with, with his music and, you know, his quarterly beat projects and, you know, label upon labels are putting them out. Um, you know, and it's through, through hard work. Uh, Brandon over here, he's a part of the crew called The Honor Roll. 
out in the Bay. I've known about them for a few years and you know, one of their artists, you know, you know, gets on and he makes sure to put the other ones on and everybody just keeps working together. If you have a team and you know, and even if you like I said, even if you guys do have problems behind the scenes, if you guys move, you know, as a united front and you know, in this digital age have a blog or a website that you can funnel all your work out of and people have a specific place they can come and get it from at all times, then you know, you have a better chance of being noticed by, by the markets, I think. I'm Kane Mayfield from Mania Music Group. I'm an MC and a spoken word poet. Um, oh, my bad. Uh, and I was actually a reader of uh, Slapbox with Jesus. <coughs> Dope. But, nah, but I, I wanted to thank y'all. No, like really not like a, you know, but you know, I wanted to thank y'all because it's good to get inside your heads and see that you're not like you know evil music Nazis that hate us and want to destroy us. Because that's what you know. I mean, I, that's not my rumor, but that's you know some rumors I heard in the bathroom things like that, that you know. Y'all can basically, you know, the gods of them can push the button and destroy your career and you'll never get out of the hole you're in and my mom's basement is not furnished. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but my, my real question is, is that um, what's, there has to be a happy middle ground between the guy that gives you the one thing one time, kind of like the respectful, too humble for his own good, hey, how you doing, I rap, here's my email, blah, send you something real quick and never hear from him again. If you don't post it, he just assumes you wasn't interested versus the um, electronic hand J that you'll get from some, and you, hip hop VX has a, it's, you know, you know it's, it's, it's real, y'all you know, this. some people that'll give you like a, a hot stone massage until you post their music. And you, and you know, and some people ain't as iron willed as, you know, Mecca, cause you're um, the devil sometimes. <laughs> and um, some people just give in and you'll see like, an artist, and as, a, as an independent artist, my job is to be popular. It's like I'm running for class president. I gotta please everybody. So if I'm not here, I'm not there, I lose. Versus like MC give you a hand J who uh, <laughs> will just keep on bothering you. And you'll see some, what some blogs are like, I'm just posting this so nigga will leave me alone. Cause yeah. he won't stop. Yeah. And we don't, y'all know who I'm talking about. It ain't even like it's like a, it's, when, when you see that comment no, no. From, from a blogger, I, I don't know that, that people generally post something just so someone will leave them alone. I think, I think a lot of times when someone is, is that dedicated to their work, um, it makes someone say, all right, you know what? Let me let other people review this and, and see what kind of take that, that they develop on it. When, when, when you find someone that, that's that pers um, persistent. I think of a, an artist named Percy P. And <laughs> you, you could not, you couldn't hide from this brother. I, I tried to, I tried to. He would find you, um, you know. And if you told him, Percy B was like a, a five-year-old. Where you said, "All right, you know, we're gonna go to Disney World next week." If you told Percy B you're gonna buy a CD, he was gonna find you. You'd be coming out your shower in your house, and there's Percy P right there with his CD. Like, you got me now. Percy P sold me a CD at my wedding, and I ain't even married yet, though. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've come off the train at Fat Beast in New York and Percy's selling CDs out front. I'm like, Percy, what you doing here? And then I'd be in LA on, Mon on Melrose and Percy would be right there. <laughs> and then I'd be somewhere else and Percy would be right there. Right. So, so when someone is that, when someone is that persistent, um, you know, I, I don't, I mean, don't always take the text that you read on a blog as, as, because that could be my, my heart at that moment. And this, this could be the sound that I was digging right at that moment. So don't always take that as, as someone's gospel. But really, I mean, a lot of times music is posted for you to, for you to generate your own opinion on. You know, not, not that it's, it's a, a personal favorite of mine or a personal favorite of the person running that site, but, but I want to see how you feel about this. I, wanna, I know what I'm thinking. You know what, tell me. Let me start the discussion by giving you this to see what you feel. My thing is, um, like, 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 like I said, like I stated earlier, we both started the shaking myself. We started the site off of our own personal interests, and as it took off, we've obviously had to, I guess, adapt. But there's been so many times where I've been, me personally, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm assuming they all have. I've been hit up for, oh, you wanna go out for drinks? Oh, you want this nice little woo-dee-woo-dee-wham? 
And matter of fact, a couple days ago, I got an email. This happens every once in a while. I got an email flat out from a dude that said, how much does it cost to put a song on your site? And setting the record straight once and for all, I've never, and Shake has never taken any kind of money from any artist of any, in any manner to do a post. To, to me, that's like, that's like payola. And last time I checked, that was mad illegal. And, that's, and, la and last time I also checked, paying somebody to do a post, <coughs> World Star, <coughs> sorry. Paying somebody to do a post. <laughs> paying, somebody to, paying somebody to do a post, um, you're, not, you're not being honest with your listener. You're not giving your opinion. You just got paid to do that, so that throws all that opinion madness out the window. So they can try to give me electric H jobs, or was that how he said it? Hand J's? <laughs> but you know, like they can, they can, no, no, they, they can, they can give me, they can try to give me electronic H whatevers, but my girl can give me real, yeah. So. Thanks, but no thanks, you know. <laughs> I wanna, um, I wanna introduce myself. I'm Simone Jacobson. I work for Words, Beats, and Life, and thank you. Um, what's up to the panelists again? I also want to give a special thank you to the folks doing the live stream. We have just as many people, if not more, on the live stream as we have in this room right now. So think of yourself, close your eyes, imagine double. It's dope. We have Deja here and Andy, and I'm so grateful for their assistance. They're holding it down. So on the live stream, I'm the analog girl in the digital world. I'm fielding the live stream questions through paper because um, I, I haven't really figured out how to get the laptop all the way over here. So um, the first question from the live stream is for Odyssey. And the question is, is the model that you're using for bringing labels, your statistics, the new model for 2010? Do you, do you see that going that way? Um, I, not to be rude, but I think it's that very same thought process that's the problem in the first place. Everything in the world has moved from this one-size-fits-all philosophy to um, being custom. And that's the, that's the truth. Uh, we, we, we saw the rise of it through MySpace, where you could customize this and you could have your own songs and this, and that became too much. But there is no one way. Stop searching for that one way. That's what labels, that's why they, they're reaching their demise. There is no one way to do anything. You can't take what I'm doing and say, oh, if I do that, it's going to work. You can't say, well, if Wale did this, then I'm going to do that. It's not going to work for you. You have to have your own plan, your own idea. There are rough blueprints and skeletons of things that you can adopt to your own you know, business, and possibly they could work. Um, for me personally, yes, that is the new model. Um, it's working time and time again where I take download numbers and content and use that in the office to get deals, to get endorsements, to get investments, to create opportunities. Um, I, I could say that could work for, for a fair amount of people. You know what I mean, that's not one that's extremely limited to just me. So it, it's one of the, the formulas that will, you'll have more success. Definitely I can say that. Thank you. Um, two notes also for y'all out here and for the folks on our live stream. Everybody's been asking me where all the female bloggers <coughs> and just females in general. So just for our live stream folks, can all the ladies who are in the house just give a little noise, a little something? They can't see you, so you have to be louder. <laughs> yeah, that's way more than I expected. That's what's up. All right. Thank you to everybody and anybody that's like tweeting or doing your, you know, internet things. We're using the hashtag hip-hop bloggers all attached. So if you want to let everybody know how awesome we are, you can use that hashtag. And the last question from the live stream is for everybody, uh, open game. What is the future of the blogs? I mean, the reality is that as much as we, uh, uh, in my opinion, as much as we would like uh, to believe that the blog will remain, will, will remain just um, just opinions, though, though they will be. I mean, they're, you know, like I said, like this, these are his opinions. The reality is those opinions are, are taken seriously and that in the future, it's my belief that blogs will be 
uh, and already are to a, to a certain extent what what newspapers and everybody else uh, are today and, and even what they cite now. New York Times, I live, in, I live in Brooklyn and you know for those who live in New York, New York Times, they cite blogs all the time, like all the time. You know, they, they Ill, Ill Doctrine, the guy Jay Smooth has been on CNN, Fox News has cited him, Bill Riley has cited him, like, like so like, though it's an opinion, uh, it, it's no different than if I was an editorialist writing for the New York Times. Like, we, we're still journalists, um, and those things are, are, are taken seriously, and I believe will be taken more seriously, especially since the entire literary industry and newspapers as we know them are crumbling. I mean, Sasha Fair Jones, as you all know, I'm sure, works, he, he writes a blog for the New Yorker magazine, which he does the same thing that we do, for the New Yorker magazine, you know, so that's that's where it's going. I, I think. Uh, I just want to like take you guys back to an earlier part of, part of the conversation when um, we were all like making fun of the '96 Telecommunications Act, which you know basically single-handedly destroyed commercial radio as we know it. Um, I just want to remind you what I said at the very beginning before we started this conversation. If you think the Telecom Act was bad, uh, you know, look look out for what will happen if we lose net neutrality. The blogs, your ability to say stuff online, the ability to post stuff that you want to post without having to pay somebody a toll, in this case, your internet service provider, this is something that you got to pay attention to or else that could go away just as fast as, you know, the, the like vibrant radio, regionalism in radio, localism in radio. So it's just something to pay attention to. Net neutrality, file it away in the back of your mind. You can check out Future Music's site. I'll stop talking about it, but just want to put it out there. Um... First, I don't really understand the question um, because blogs are, are technology. At the end of the day, it's the people behind it and the opinions are expressed, and the technology is always going to change. So I don't necessarily know the future of blogs because, I mean, when blogs first started, did the sound go When blogs first started, people were using them for, like, um, you know, personal journals and diaries on the internet, you know. Um, and then, you know, the people at blogger.com decided to make, you know, usable software that would do all the work for you, uploading the post for you, changing the calendar, you know, WordPress, everybody in my live journal, you know. It's technology, it's always, uh, you know, evolving, and that'll always change. It's, it's the people behind and, and the people that are using the technology that's the future. Um, I'm being dead ass serious. The blog thing, the, that, the blog game is dead, yo. <laughs> Like, I hate that word, blog. I hate saying the word blog. I cringe every time I have to say that word, blog. I almost threw up in my mouth four times about to say the word, blog. You know, like, literally, at this point, the, that, that field is no better than the plethora of rappers trying to get in where they fit in. There is an, like I said, there's an equal amount number of rappers and e-writers or bloggers or whatever and no teachers you know like I know I'm well aware that what I do will not be forever so that's why I'm doing like 50 to 11 different things at once whether it's uh, DJing at radio stations or venues or freelance writing for magazines or photography which I just started doing two week two weeks ago so um, we all know that eventually this is a this is a passing fad, man. Like like straight up, like like East Coast music in the '90s to West Coast music in '92 through '96 to so the Southern music, like like the crunk scene. It's all a passing fad. So I really hope that people don't jump into this field, honestly expecting that they're gonna get their cheese and and do whatever whatever and be straight. Nah, son. Nah, dog. You gotta do like. You got you got to do more. So I, I, honestly, I'm the wrong person to ask that question because I'm so I'm so much of a cynic and like I can um it, you know so yeah. It's like, it's like Dallas said, if you have a good idea, have another one. Question. Right. Uh, passing fad or not? Um, as someone who has been both a blogger and someone who's considered a journalist, I've come into conflict with. Um, people having a negative stigma towards blogging. Um, bloggers seem to be half of a journalist, you might say. I want to hear a defensive argument um, against this. Uh, I love that when I, 
when I first uh, started to blog, to weblog, I hate to say blog too, it, it does sound whack. By the way, uh, that is, that's an actual female blogger right, right there. Woo! Yes. She's, she's, ve she's very popular on the internet. She's very popular. People like her writing. Uh, um, I have to say that uh, people hated uh, the way I wrote. Uh, because I, I make uh, uh, spelling errors on purpose, mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> it's, it's to create this voice that I'm speaking in as if I'm talking to my friends. Um, you know, the funny thing is, uh, being a black male, you are inherently multilingual. You have a language you use with your parents. You have one you use when you want to get a job. You have one you use when you're talking to someone that you are intimate with. And you have the one that you use when you are with your friends and you don't care what the F you say. You, you let it all hang out. And that's the, the language, that's the, the voice I tried to put onto my weblog. The voice that I'm talking to my friends and I don't care, you know, what kind of curse word I say. And I don't care, um, it's not that I don't care how bad my spelling is, I don't, I'm not a retard. <laughs> a retard. A retard, retard. retard. Yes, thank you. I'm not a retard. <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know what, we have, we have, at the end of the day, we are communicating. It, it's all about communication. We are taking it back to, we're taking it back to the cave painting. And as long as someone can understand what you're saying to them, as a matter of fact, the fact that someone understands what you're saying to them, you've done your job, you've communicated. And uh, you know, uh, as Odyssey said, now we are, we're really dealing with specialization as well. So you don't really have to be appealing to the masses. If that's what you want, then, then you'll have to align yourself for that. But I, I came in with a voice because I wanted to feel like I was talking just to my friends. And journalists, uh, uh, old school and mainstream journalists dislike this because we are breaking their model. They, they were trained to, to, to walk on this rail and we're like, forget that, we're going our own path and we're doing our own thing. And, and it, it kind of undermines everything that, they, uh, you know, that they've been forced into. So they, they are scared of us. We are the, the tiny raptors, they are the big fat dinosaurs, we are biting at their heels. We will eat their carcasses. <laughs> when climate changes, when climate changes, what happens to dinosaurs? The large dinosaurs, they Extinct. die. Extinct. Well, can we come full for us? I want to uh, get the, uh, the remaining, remaining three people with questions to come up and ask your question to the specific person um, you want to ask it to. And for you all to incorporate your answers into your closing statements. We've got about 10 minutes left. We'd like to get a wrap up. First, I just want to say what's up to Odyssey. I haven't seen this dude in years. Like, I know him when I was like 16 year old trying to be a rapper or whatever. Um, what's up to Mecca? Just seen him last week at the Source uh, Bloggers. And Dallas, you almost hit my cousin with your car. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to know at what point did you guys realize that your blog was worthy enough to become a brand or somewhat of a business where you branch out and use it for other means? You know, like Mecca said, you know, payola is illegal. You can't just be taking money from artists or labels to make posts. But at what point in time did you realize these labels are sending me their music and I want to make money off their ad space or do events and whatnot? At what point did you, you know, realize that and how did you go about doing that? What do you want to ask specifically so they can then, like, ask one of them specifically? Okay, I got you, I got you. When did you realize that? You could make, uh, you yeah, know, me. make your, uh, which person? Who? the website guys. Which person, which one which person in particular? Because, well, obviously he's a rapper, so I want to ask the guys who run the website. Which, which one? Mecca, FW and J. You rap the truth one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go, I'll go with Mecca, I'll go with Mecca. How you doing? My name is Tommy of what we talking about dot com. Um, a new site. Uh, this question is for Mecca or maybe Frank. Well, Frank kind of answered the question already. Um, as a newcomer, as a newcomer to this, like, how do you go about building a relationship with artists or I guess their publicists on getting the music firsthand, so people like me won't have to wait for you guys to post it? Frank will answer that in the wrap up statement. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, my name is Wayne Million. I work with this website called Death Magazine. Speaking um, to the mic. 
Jason, I have a question for you. Uh, it's about blogger as journalists. I think um, there's a large responsibility uh, placed on journalists to express truth. Um, doesn't integrating the blogger into that sphere put too much responsibility on just an average dude in their mom's basement? So who wants to um, what was that? What was that again? About the whole how you turn it into a oh um, how I made the how I made the transition when advertising networks came after us asking us to join their network. That's when it became more than a hobby. It became actual way of living. Right. So you were just doing what you were doing, and then they noticed. Yeah, they noticed they, they noticed us, they noticed the hits, and they felt that they can make money, that we all can make money. Because when we all started, with the exception of like one particular site that shall name nameless, we all started the site organically. We've all started the site free. The only things we were, the only things we were wasting, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> we all we, we didn't buy our way into this we all started our we all started off basically as a hobby and then we managed to get enough notoriety and popularity that people who felt they could make money with us hit us up so oh closing up close the statement okay um adapt be receptive be objective um, something I always say, don't fall victim to underdevelopment and overexposure. Don't fall victim to underdevelopment and overexposure. Um, that's one of the most important things I tell everyone. That gentleman who just came up, uh, doing after, I used to do an after school program, just teaching kids about music industry and how to make tracks. That's why I met him. But definitely my, 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 my closing statement. Real quick, I know he didn't want me to talk, but all I'll say is this. Stay, stay on your grind and remain humble. That's, to me, the biggest ways to be a success. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> pause, pause to this look. If you're, if you're on the live stream right now, pause to what this looks like. But at the end of the day, internet. The inter interconnected networks on the internet. You, your, your Facebook, your Bandcamp, your Twitter. Uh, use all of them. Uh, use them in, con in conjunction with each other, in concert with each other. Use them individually. Um, but access them because uh, we are we're in a great time right now. And the fact that people are, are exchanging so much information right now might be a threat because uh, people want to know how they can make money off that. People want to know how they can exploit that. So while this window is, is, is available to us, use it. It's open, access it, and, and don't look backwards. And, and do not look backwards. Um, <coughs> for the musicians, for the artists, uh, you, you have to consider yourself much more than that. And, and please don't just be the CEO. Okay, also be the person that, that wipes the floors down uh, at the end of the night, also be the, the person that makes the, uh, that makes the donuts. Uh, wear as many hats as possible to understand how you can communicate best to your audience, um, how you can find where they're at, how you can be like, like, like that dude Percy P who sold me that CD when I came out of the shower. <laughs> Pause, but yes, internet, internet. Uh, growing up, you know, I, I, I drew a lot, um, you know, I wrote stories, I made comic books, video games, what have you. Um, you know, my whole life, everybody ever told me, oh, you're an artist, you're so artistic. Um, you know, and part of being an artist is, is not wanting to be a cliche, right? So, you know, that was one of the things I always resisted being called an artist. It's like, I'm a human being. This is how I express myself and relate and, and execute ideas. Um, you know, so when I'm making something, it's not because I'm being an artist, it's because I'm living, I'm doing what I do. So I say that to say this, um, Tommy, you know, wanting to uh, 
you know, to, to meet, you know, artists and musicians and, and to be able to have those sort of like exclusive to those relationships with them when they want to give you something first. I think what's important, what's, what's important to, to remember is that, you know, underneath all the hats that we may wear, we're people and, you know, we have to, you know, like each other and each other's energy before, you know, you ever get to business, you know, so like somebody come out from out of town and your company is about to make a deal with your, their company, you take them to dinner first, you know, you, you take them to the script club, whatever y'all do, and then y'all get to talk about what you need to do. You got to be able to, to relate to people on, you know, an individual label, level first, you know, so it may not be like the artist you may necessarily want to get, you know, like say, you know, Drake or, you know, uh, or J Electronic or somebody that's being talked about a lot, you know, you got to start with the people you know that are doing stuff that you actually believe in. Um, that's how, you know, at least in my case, you know, all the artists I know, I knew because um, either I knew somebody that knew them, I was very interested in their music. And, you know, when, you know, when it got to the point where, you know, if I wasn't doing their album covers for them and trying to help them look better than, you know, I felt somebody else would look, when it got to the point where I was starting a website and, and posting their music, you know, it was such a new thing at the time that they were excited that their music was being put up, you know, with, with cute little covers tilted at a 10 degree counterclockwise angle. And, you know, they tell their friends and their friends would tell their friends. And, you know, at that point, you know, artists start reaching out to you, you know, <coughs> wanting to be a part of what you're doing. So I, I, I say, you know, be yourself. Um, and, and take interest in the people that are immediately around you. You know, like the artist that you, that, that you posted. And like, I really like that song, the joint that she did with Ali Vegas. I forget her name, I'm sorry. But you know, like you take, Carolina. say that again? Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, so you, you, take, you take interest in the people immediately around you and, and you work with them, especially if they have talent. You know, uh, it's not necessarily about the biggest names because the names nobody's talking about today will be, you know, possibly the big names tomorrow if everybody is, you know, and a working machine and all the gears and the clock are, it'll be somebody's time eventually. Uh, it's a tough question, bro. I'm going to try to try to work this out. I, 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 if I got it right, I believe you're asking, you're saying the job of the journalist is to, is to disseminate truth. And therefore, saying that a blogger, a blogger would take the role of a journalist would be a lot of pressure on the regular guy. Right or wrong? Yeah. Everywhere. Right. The, the answer is no. It's not fair. Uh, um, and I apologize if, if I made it seem that way. No, it's not. Uh, the, the, but, but what I do think is that I. I I think the beauty in, in, in web blogging um, or just disseminating your opinion is that if, if you're consistent and if you're, if you're consistent and articulate and thorough, like a cat like Mecca or like Frank, if you're thorough um, and consistent, I think that the, the, the conventional journalist can use you as a reference. That's all. That's all I'm saying is that, is that what, what seems to be very, uh, or what originally started something very small, like, yo, there's like a, a handful of people who just talk shit on the internet about all these things, but they're talking shit every single day about these things, and they seem to know about these things, and people seem to listen to what they're saying, then a journalist, a conventional journalist who writes for the Times can say, yo, so-and-so says this, right? I can, he can agree or disagree and present the facts, but he can reference it and base those facts, he can build those facts on the opinion of one of us, right? And, and so that's my thing. As far as my closing statement as a reviewer, don't take the review seriously, folks. Like, if you MC, and you're a musician and you love it, do your thing, right? Like, do your thing. I mean, you know, Odyssey's like one of the illest cats in D.C. Everybody knows him. But the reality is I'm sure he's gotten a bad review at some point, you know what I mean, by someone. And the truth is, is that, like, that was somebody's opinion of his work. It's just that. Like, don't be a baby. Just keep it pushing at the end of the day. Like, do your thing, you know what I mean? I write what I like. If I don't like it, I don't like it. <coughs> keep it moving. Well, these guys are impossible to do a closing statement that's of any worth after. Um, I just want to say, if you, uh, if you like something, if you like the fact that there's all these dynamic blogs, if you like the fact that you can, you know, talk about stuff, you know, at these sites, if you like the feeling that, you know, these guys are human beings and they're approachable, they have, you know, real opinions and, you know, real views on stuff, then fight for it. 
And, uh, you know, it's like uh, Frank said, you know, the, the, the window of time, right? What, was that what you were, you were talking yeah. about? You yeah. know, like the, the window of time, this is, an, this is an opportunity. But you know what? Who says that window has to close? So, you know, the, the only reason that I keep bringing up the policy stuff is like, you know, let's make sure we can keep this window open so we don't go back to, you know, people telling us how we have to do something. It's great to be able to take ads. It's great to be able to be an entrepreneur, develop your own business models like Odyssey's talking about. But we got to make sure that, you know, everybody has, a, you know, the ability to do that where they can. And the rest of it's up to your creativity. Um, and Odyssey, by the way, I want to talk to you after because you're amazing and I totally want to have you come to our conference because you're just like the... The example of an artist who's like really thinking of this stuff. So, all of you guys are great. Thank you, Kevin. Wow. Yeah. Now to close out the panel, we're going to have closing remarks from Simone Jacobson and Mazi Mutafa for Words, Beats, and Life. I'm sorry. I got a qu I got a question. How many artists here brought their mixtape? Let me just, like being dead ass, put your hand down, Amanda. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm avoiding you. I'm avoiding you. I'm avoiding you. <laughs> so uh, thanks everybody for, thank you everybody for coming out. Uh, thanks, guys. Streaming, y'all could stay in your mom's basement. Basically. You know, to be honest, this is, the, this is actually one of the first events that we as an organization have done that's specifically designed for artists. Like, we do a lot of work with hip hop scholars, we do a lot of work with hip hop organizations. But this is really the first time we've actually tried to partner with an organization that their whole focus is working to support independent artists to, to do something different for the hip hop community. So, I'm gonna be honest, like, we said to ourselves when we were planning this, like, if, if 20 people come, all right, it's cool. If 40 people come, it's an amazing success. The room is full. So this is, this is beyond what any of us imagined could happen. Thanks to Simone Jacobs. Our okay. partnership with the Future Music Coalition and the reality is the DC, Maryland, Virginia, California, Philadelphia, New York community that decided to come out and share their points of view, their story. <laughs> Ultimately, what we want to have happen after this, um, we got everybody's email who, who paid in advance and everyone who signed in. We're going to be sending you information about local blogs, national blogs, regional blogs. Because once you get home, if you've got a favorite DC, Maryland, or Virginia blog, you might find a different depiction of what happened here today. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So I want to thank you all for coming out. I want to thank Simone Jacobson, who is, the, who is the director of the Cypher, for putting this event together and having the vision to actually push us as an organization to do it. For those of you that are interested, you know, bloggers, artists, you know, just folks that love hip-hop. Um, as an organization, we're always looking for new volunteers. So on your way out, please grab my business card, um, whether that's to come in in our after-school program where we teach DJing, b-boying, graffiti, and emceeing, or whether that's you're looking to volunteer at some of our special events. Next, next Saturday, we actually have our fifth annual hip-hop chess tournament, Bummers the Boards. Last year's mixtape actually featured an intro from DJ Heat, who's here with us today. I had tracks featuring EXO's here with us today. DC, Maryland, Virginia is really doing this thing, and as an organization, we want to promote and support the development of this movement. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shamazi, and, and again, thank you so much to all of you guys. Three websites to remember. I'm going to see, see how good you are. I usually host poetry events, so we do a lot of call and response. I know it's real stale when you have a panel, even though our panelists are amazing and eloquent and animated. Um, it's hard to sit for this long and just not say anything. So we appreciate you for that. All right, we're gonna try this. www. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> WBLINC.org. Can I get it out here? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's WBL, Where's Beats in Life? www.futuremusic.org. <laughs> oh, y'all sound like some robots, dang. We like work really hard and y'all just sitting there like robots. Okay, last most important one is where you can find this stream. If you just couldn't get enough, you wanna share it with somebody, you wanna watch it over and over again, you can find it immediately at web, <coughs> W-E-B dot ill-ish, I-L-L-I-S-H dot U-S. And eventually it will be also available on both of our websites. You can contact Mozzie, myself, Gene from the Future Music Coalition, 
If you want more information about our organizations and about any of these folks, all the things that we do, stay connected. Two last notes and then we're gonna, we're gonna get you out of here. Um, this is our Global Journal of Hip Hop Culture. Comes out twice a year. The next issue is gonna be out within the next month. It's called The Sex Issue, Deeper Than Misogyny. You can purchase it right here in the bookstore at Busboys, also on our website. And lastly, I want everybody, our panelists and the audience, if we could just give a big round of applause for Jeff Tate, our moderator, who also basically <laughs> put this panel together. Thank you again to all of you.